I know some people who are afraid of elevators. For them it's nothing more than a big panic inducing metallic box and if it weren't for matters of convenience and conserving time, they would rather just take the stairs. Modern innovations don't help either, I mean sure allow the passengers to see how far they are from the ground and get more scared that way. Don't pass this fear of enclosed spaces as just a phase, it's called claustrophobia and in severe cases it can cause panic attacks. Keyword being severe cases because on a milder scale traces of it are in everyone. Don't tell me you feel comfortable in crowded elevators, trains and rooms where it is so full of people there isn't any breathing room. Super long hallways with walls suspiciously close to each other trigger the same effect. Horror films and video games have constantly used enclosed spaces to create a sense of discomfort. Shinji Mikami's Evil Within cleverly uses cinematic letterboxes so that the player can never see the ground or the ceiling thus leaving an imaginative effect on the viewer where the actual room size differs from the visual being displayed. Silent Hill uses narrow corridors with limited lighting, giving the protagonist a very small space to run from the enemies that inhabit them. Cutting off freedom of movement and adding layered tension on top of it can scare anyone. This is precisely why The Shining's maze is so terrifying. On the other end of the spectrum, there is kinophobia, fear of open empty spaces with no distinguishable boundaries. It is only right that a person stranded in the middle of nowhere with no distinct destination in sight would feel afraid. But kinophobia is used more in terms of filling the void. It is like leaving a spot for an object in your room where every inch, nook and cranny should be occupied with something. Minimalism is strictly not allowed. It is obvious that the person in question would be accustomed to tight, enclosed spaces, and the opposite of that would trigger a fear response. In many ways it's like being afraid of solitude, afraid of being alone, not just deprived of human company but also objects and set boundaries for existence. For example, it's like living inside of a Jackson Pollock painting and being comfortable there. great example of both claustrophobia and kinophobia, even though there are two contradictory fears, is the back rooms. The creepypasta inspired structure of randomly disjointed rooms that seemingly stretch for infinity is claustrophobic due to the density of walls closely packed to each other, but it is also kinophobic due to the relative emptiness found here. And no way of accurately defining where the structure actually ends. Infinite space, claustrophobic pressure, infinite space, claustrophobic pressure, infinite space, claustrophobic pressure. Out of all the unsolved mysteries in the world, the most captivating, interesting but frightening one has to be the depths of the ocean. Throughout my visits to various aquariums, I have constantly felt that underwater life is extremely alien. They look out of this world but a part of it at the same time. And this is evident just in the aquatic fauna that we have discovered. What about the ones we haven't seen simply because we 
can't. I'm not talking about the regions of water that are visible to us, the surface. I'm talking about the abyssopelagic and the even deeper hadopelagic regions. It's a pitch black darkness here. Light doesn't penetrate this deep and the pressures are too high. Even the most advanced machinery can't explore this depth. That is why we only have discovered about 5% of the ocean. So what do you get when you mix claustrophobia plus kinophobia plus the fear of the unknown and take them all underwater for a dive into the abyss? You get thalassophobia. In the context of fear of spaces, it is objectively the most terrifying one. The claustrophobic underwater pressure, the kinophobic emptiness of the abyss, and the fear of not knowing what you'll encounter and when. The space in which all of this takes place is so enormous in all its three dimensions that it becomes apparent how small we are in this giant ecosystem. Things that weren't apparent before now make sense in an instant. If you want to understand thalassophobia without putting yourself in danger, which is honestly the only way I'd recommend, just play Subnautica. It is an incredible survival game that will take you to the deepest depths of the ocean. All the fears that I have mentioned here are there in full force, making the game beyond terrifying. You will get to see the abyss, the claustrophobic places, the, the incredible sense of just how much we don't know and how insignificant we are when placed in an ecosystem this big. The reason I'm writing all of this is because we all have these fears, but some people have severe cases of them. As a result, instead of mocking or downplaying these fears for them, what we should do is lend them a helping hand. With proper counseling, all these phobias are easily treatable and it would seriously improve someone's quality of life. So the next time you see someone who's afraid of elevators and places that we normally don't feel afraid of realize that there is some context behind that and maybe you could help them overcome their fears